Grand-rising, my friends. Welcome, welcome back. Excited to see you. And if it's your first time here, Jane Dubley. Where do we start today? I mean, the stock market did not look good. Boy, what is going wrong? What the, the numbers from the economy are looking good. I mean, are people afraid of the 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 variants that are out there or there are other matters? I mean, we'll we'll talk about some more of the geopolitical stuff throughout the next couple of days, but everything Nasdaq, S&P 500, Dow Jones all down. Only bright spot was Amgen. Some down here, Tesla's up a little bit. Tesla's been doing well, I guess. Hey, it's high of 900. It's still a little bit down from there, but, you know, it was an order of magnitude higher than it was 18 months ago. So, United Health up as well. Salesforce, Procter & Gamble, Walt Disney. Slightly, slightly up today. Crypto market was, I think, even better than what it was. No, I guess this is where is that. Okay. So Bitcoin at $47,490. Ethereum at $3,418. Cardano at $2.35. Uh, XRP at $1.07. Solana at $147.22. Doge at $0.24. Cents. Terra at $34.72. Well, you know, oh, Algorand's starting to come down, drop a lot. Dollar, uh, yeah, dollar ninety three now. It was in the two dollars for a couple several days there. I think the market, when I say trading in a channel, that mean, you know, it's kind of going up and down in the range before it bounces up. I don't think we're going to the rest of the year. I don't think we're going to see a more much more of a bear market. I think we're going to end up seeing more of. Um, a bull now the question is this is gonna be like a hyper bull where the prices are gonna go up almost you know tenfold from here for some cases we, we'll see it's going to be interesting the ETH is continuing to burn that we'll talk about that I believe yeah that's today where how these factors are gonna to start to play out where you know it's gonna force the price to go up so the more ETH that gets burned is less that's out there for others. We'll talk about that soon. So, I'm not your advisor. Uh, this is just me talking. All of this, not financial advice, medical advice, uh, relationship advice, or anything. With that said, you know we hear about that positivity and what that is. I'm not gonna belabor the point today. We're gonna. Going into the weekend, so I'm gonna get you on your way. And so, if there's someone in your life that's important and you want them to know how much they meant to you and how they motivated you, go ahead and say something nice about them down in the comment section, and then forward them this video and say, "Hey, look, look what I wrote about about you. That's gonna last for eternity, well, at least as long as there's electricity on the planet Earth. Now, one day, if electricity get taken away, now you know we may see, unless there's some type of hard drive that contains this information that it can be brought back in the storage for the simulations. And if we are already in the simulations, maybe the simulations that we make in the simulations, you know, and they, uh, in and simulation. <laughs> what? Hey, let's go. What do we got today? This biohacker is the real life nebula. She has more than 50 chips in her body and identifies as a cyborg. So this, this, I get confused because the pronouns switch so much in this article. I don't know if this individual identifies as binary or or some something other because they see themselves as... We need to have a discussion about transhumanism. And, and I guess right here, let me do a little bit of that before we go on. So for those who don't know, transhumanism is the belief that... It may even describe it in here before I go on and start. Okay, yeah, it talks about it. What is the transhumanism movement? The idea of integrating cybernetic components and, and not even it's anything, any biological hack, cybernetic hack that makes us transcend our humanity, transhuman. 
The idea of integrating cybernetic components to the human body seems somewhat limited to futuristic tales. However, technological advances have made this concept come out of science fiction, and little by little, it becomes reality. Transhumanists seek the continuation and acceleration of the evolution of intelligent life beyond its current human form and its limitations through science and technology, guided by principles and values of promoting life. That is according to the person who defined the term, Maz Moore, back in 1990. I'm aware it, it, it gets deeper. You hear the word, the singularity. That's the belief there's going to become a point where man will merge with machine, artificial intelligence, and become one species. And a lot of people think that that time is coming within the next 20-some-odd 20, 20 years or so. Could be sooner, could be a little bit later, but within the time span... Um, these are what a lot of people with a lot of money are planning for. And I used to tell people who I work with that it's not what you believe sometimes. It's what somebody with a bunch of money believe that can impact your life in ways you can't even imagine. You know, you can be like, oh, I don't, I think that's silly. But they have enough money to cause it to impact your life. So be mindful. So they call our human bodies wetware which is what we are, the term that conceives a human being from a computing as an entity composed of hardware, our body, and software, our mind. And quite honestly, um, I do the same thing in my field. I be thinking about looking at people and thinking about, is this a hardware or software problem with this individual? Some people's, their physical body is causing problems with their software, and some of their software is playing feedback on their physical body. From there, I can explain that a computer hacker is one that breaks into a software and alters it to and alters it to use it in a different way from the original, then a biohacker is the one who modifies the function of his or her body by integrating electronic components. So they call themselves active humans, body augmenters, hack their biological systems eventually to become a cyborg. Within this group, they call themselves grinders, those who perceive themselves as a hybrid between human and machine. And this that is, people who are identify themselves as cyborg, I can't even pronounce this, Lep Anon. We say Lep Anon. So this article is about this individual, Lep Anon. They call him, say he is here, up here is her. So it's confusing for me. Lep has recounted his transition to cyborg, which has earned him an army of fans and detractors. Started when the British woman bought a digital chip, a reader, medical in instruments online. A friend in 2007, when a British woman bought a digital chip, a reader, and medical instruments online, a fan who was studying medicine helped her to make the incision and inserted the chip. Since then, this individual has inserted more than 50 cybernetic devices throughout their body, uh, done most of the surgeries themselves without any anesthesia, since she cannot buy it because she does not have medical accreditation. Can't get anesthesia for that. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't just let anybody get medical anesthesia. The, you know, you say it like, yeah, they won't let me buy it because I don't have accreditation. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how it works. You know, no one stop you from going to medical school, getting the accreditation, and being a grinder. You know, then that way you don't have to worry. You will, you know, and also probably learn a little bit more how to make things easier or work better for you. You know, in that in that sense. Although his many modifications are mad, among his many modifications are magnets that he inserts into his fingers, which activated by small coils connected to external sensors allow him to feel the distance between his hand and objects. Okay, that's sweet. A chip that works like a credit card. Okay, some people think that's Mark of the Beast, but you know, it has a pirate box, but had to, I think this one had to get removed. Um, has some Wi Fi storage and I'm sorry, Wi Fi antenna and a USB storage. So. And, and, you know, look, I've talked a little bit, and I need I probably at some point we'll show the video that Elon Musk is doing something similar with Neuralink in, in planting his electrodes and brains. And I'm not against it, to be quite honest. I, I believe going forward that this is going to be part of the wave of innovation of how cybernetics will be integrated into our bodies. Um yeah, I just think it's going to be part of the future. You're going to have nano. You're going to have nano machines that that flow through your system, keeping an eye and make sure it's healthy, sampling it, giving um, help, augmenting areas that need to be. The question is, you know, um, it was a couple of months back. I used to. It was some articles about how the Chinese and the French 
are engaging in genetic engineering their soldiers because why wouldn't they if they could have an advantage? And so if you hear that, you know that United States, Britain, Russia, Israel, everyone else is also looking at the same technology of how to augment their soldiers through genetic engineering. And you think they're not going to use cybernetics? Come on, let's be real. So we've, you know, Neuralink technology has been tested on a pig and a monkey that could play a video game with his mind. I will show that clip on here at some point. But so this is the future. Instead of doing it at the crib, I would highly recommend getting the proper training. And even if you choose to experiment on yourself, you know, hey, I'm, I'm about freedom. And, you, you know, to a certain extent, this one is not hurting nobody but yourself, you know. What if this person then requires a lot of emergency services or medical utilization to uh, take care of them? And, you know, that it's a slippery slope, but hey, feel free. Heart, people's heartbeats synchronize when they're captivated by the same story. Now, they've found that even over distance... A preliminary study looking at what happens to our bodies when, as we pay attention to these tales that found our hearts start beating in unison, even if we're miles away from each other. So it's not just being in the presence and being synchronized because we I've mentioned the word synchronicity. I'm not sure if anyone doesn't know what that is or do know what it is. You know, either way, I'll explain it is that once you start to understand that the universe operates in a certain way, um, you can. You start to get certain reminders and 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 see the patterns of things that go like i explain to people like if you start you know it's almost like pre before how uh google and facebook would steal all your information where you'll be thinking about something talking about it and then next thing you know or for example the easiest one you you know this may have happened a long time ago if people are older you're thinking about somebody you reach the call them as soon as you pick up the phone they're on the other end now, some people argue like, oh, well, you probably already been talking to them pretty much. and Y'all been going back and forth. But sometimes it's like, nah, you know, it's, it's that thing. That's what synchronicity is, is that there is some type of undercurrent to the universe, a, a greater collective unconsciousness that binds. Kind of like we talk about entanglement. Just imagine, I, I, I like to see it as this universe is entangled. <laughs> on some level, you know, if there's a multiverse, there's probably other universes we're not entangled with, we're completely different. But in our universe, you are meant to be here, so you were probably entangled with this universe on some deep level. But that goes deeper into metaphysics. Uh, your, your heart fluctuates. Your heart rate fluctuates naturally, even when you're just sitting there doing nothing, maybe listening to a story on a radio. Guess where you're not alone. Um, so now they just had them listening to some, uh, a, while someone was reading a story, they were measuring their heart rates to see if the individuals were synchronized in terms of not like, you know, perfect in trans, but in terms of raising and lowering as the stories were being, the snippets were being told to them. So. Listening to a one minute snippet of 20 leagues under the sea versus a few minutes of instructional videos. The instructional video showed this phenomenon was not tied to emotion, which is somewhat previous days have theorized after observing this synchrony and people watching the same movie. But disrupting the volunteers concentration by making them count backwards or subjecting them to distracting sounds diminished their heart synchronicity and their ability to recall the narrative. So why is this important is that a million different reasons quite honestly you know not even hyperbole but truly uh I'm, I'm probably even under stating it by a million different reasons we are so attached on a fundamental level and that is used against us and we need to be learning how to use it for us so a lot of this conflict you see right now in in you know different parts of the world. Now look, people are fighting over water between Ethiopia and Egypt or, you know, 
the, the Hatfield and McCoy situation in Israel between the Palestinians and Israel where, you know, they're fighting over what happened last week as opposed to of trying to really sit down and figure out that after all these years we, we can't figure out a solution to this. Um, this is being used against us. It's being by people, by forces that want us to fight each other. So they... They speak to this deep level with words and images to get you riled up and, and empowered against the other, the other team. Everything's, that's not my team. My team, I want my team to win. Oh, I don't care. It's my, you know, and that's silliness. And we have to move past that and realize that our lives are so much more than that. But we minimize that, our ability to see that by our actions and, and our mentality, you know. Some of us get to grasp the bigger part of it. Aside from changes of physical activity, other stresses, the rhythm of their heart fluctuate naturally all the time. Sorry, the rhythms of our hearts fluctuate naturally all the time. This has been attributed to autonomic processes, the autonomic unconscious parts of our body regulation. But this study shows conscious processes play a role as well. There's a lot of literature demonstrating that people synchronize their physiology with each other. And we, you know, you know that you're around people, you get in train with them in the same. Um, you just feel like you're in a zone with, with people that you're around. You may even get hungry at the same time or be like, you ready to drink? Oh, I'm ready. You know, you, 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 you feel ingrained. Um, I've heard and I'm not. 100% of it is certain or not, so, you know, I'm a man and don't jump down my throat, but that if women are together um, a lot, their, their cycles start to synchronize, so. But the premise is that somehow you're interacting physically present in the same place, and they found that this is much broader and is more cognitive as opposed to just being in proximity. So it's more mindset than proximity. So this is about intention. You can get people across vast differences than intent to have the same intention and desire and make magical things happen or bad things. So, Bitcoin and Ethereum exchange reserves continue to plummet as supply shock tightness grip. And this is what I was talking about. This is a very exciting, wonderful article. And it basically means that people don't understand, for the most part, a lot of people in this market, the people who do well understand this, but a lot of people don't, that there is a limited supply of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And you see how much ETH is burned. We've been going through that lately. So Ethereum is disappearing. And when people turn around like, oh, well, I want some now or where is it at? It's going to be like, so the price is going to have dramatic jumps at points because it's going to get where something like micro, we will talk about in a second, how much micro strategies went and bought a bunch of Bitcoin. But they're going to pull a bunch of money to go buy that Bitcoin, and it's not going to be there. What happens then when the people who want it and love it can't even buy it anymore? Game theory. Everybody go nuts. So data shows that Bitcoin and Ethereum exchange reserves continue their downward trend as the supply shock tightens it grips. The exchange reserve of assets is an indicator that shows the number of coins present on wallets of all centralized exchanges. And that's what's going down, where people go to, is it, where is it, you know, when I say it's going off, um, where it's disappearing off exchange, I'm not sure if I even used the word exchanges before that, is that this metric shows that people are taking their Bitcoin from the Coinbase's, from the Binance's, from the Kraken's, from the Gemini's, and they are putting it somewhere in the safe where they feel it's safe in their own protection, either, you know, in their wallets or cold storage, wherever it may be to where for it to be sold, there has to be several steps involved. So that means that people are saying this is something they don't want to sell. They want to go. It's basically akin to. All right, um, we got these paintings. Everybody got these paintings. I'm gonna leave here at the museum so people can come in and maybe buy it, or you know, not. It's just there, but you know, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, and I may even just say, hey, don't sell it. Just you can leave it there. But people are coming and taking their paintings home. <laughs> There's gonna be nothing at the museum, and everybody else gonna walk in, be like, but but but, 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 but we'll pay more. Will you bring it here if we pay more? So that's what's happening. So the supply shock is is is. Increasing, there's been there was one percent, one point two percent less Bitcoin 
in a 30 uh, 30 day change 1.2 percent one bitcoin less and 1.6 percent 1.5 percent less of ethereum on the exchanges in the last 30 days and when that supply shock hit boom so we'll keep an eye on this grayscale and i capital partners to provide 6,700 advisors access to crypto investments. So there are all of these advisors and eight clients who now have expressed an appetite for uncorrelated return potential in their portfolios. In other words, Grayscale has opened up the, the door to umpteen millions, billions of dollars of individuals who want to invest. And so they're going to be buying what? Grayscale investments. And we just talked about now they have six SEC report, SEC reporting investment products. And they're opening up to now all of these other advisors with, you know, in, in each advisor doesn't necessarily have one client. So they're going to have, could have multiple clients. So there's a, it's a nice big chunk of individuals who, who have advisors. How many of you have advisors? I don't have an advisor. <laughs> You know, well, that's what I say my advisor is, you know, I have an open mind and I allow everyone to be my advisor in a sense to learn from how to, you know, what mistakes not to make or what good decisions to make. But, you know, in this case where somebody is literally considered an advisor and that's their job and they wake up in the morning, how do I advise this client to make more money? So these are the people who Grayscale are reaching out to with, uh, I capital partners to um, get you know get some access to that if that makes sense. MicroStrategy buys five thousand fifty more Bitcoin. Ugh, look what they wrote, and it's Bitcoin.com. They wrote Bitcoins, and now hodls. This person is just trying to just make me want to just hunt them down. What is wrong with them? Come on, Kevin, Mister Hems, what is you doing, son? <sighs> MicroStrategy buys 5,000. MicroStrategy buys 5,050 more Bitcoin. Now hodl. Now hodls. Now they hodl. 114,042 Bitcoin. You got to love it. You got to love Michael Saylor. He is. That's why I said when you sell your Bitcoin, you're selling it to him. You're selling it to Michael or me. <laughs> I'm nowhere near this, but hey, I, I've been trying to buy a little bit of Bitcoin. So you, I may get a couple of sats of Toshis off whatever you sell, but I'm nowhere near like these cats. But hey, but if I if we keep stacking those Satoshis, we'll be close, guys and gals. Let's get it. Let's get there. Let's get there. NFTs are the revenue model for the metaverse. A crypto veteran says. So this guy's just saying that. He is the founder of the Worldwide Asset Exchange. Oh, co-founder of Tether. Hey, this guy, look, this dude know what he's talking about. Um, a carbon neutral proof of stake blockchain that specializes in areas like non-fungible tokens and video games. The metaverse, a vision of an internet enabled virtual world where people have avatars and interact with digital assets and even corporal objects with augmented reality is developing rapidly as blockchain technology evolves. So the whole market is driven by the value of Ethereum, where in March, you know, I was thinking, of, you know, you got to remember, yeah, last year, March, ETH was a, a hundred bucks and now it was three thousand five hundred. So if you were buying Ethereum then or had Ethereum and started to get some more. It, like sometimes when you're buying an NFT and it's like point one Ethereum or point two you don't quite correlate in that into dollars every time because you're dealing, you, you have Ethereum, you're dealing with Ethereum. So you're like, okay, I got this much Ethereum. So that, you know, that may be, you know, a lot to me or not that much to me. Depends. And it's just, it's, it's weird. It changes your perspective when you are thinking straight crypto versus, okay, let me, how do I'm switching it back and forth between dollars because then you start to pull back. And be like, oh, oh, this is a lot of money <laughs> on the table for the for this. But yeah, you know, when you start thinking you in that metaverse and that virtual world, 
from a consumer product standpoint, what's interesting is this guy, and I agree, is not one NFT selling for a million dollars, but a million NFTs being sold for one dollar each. So understanding that NFT is not just going to be these art or these pictures like this. It may be a representation of your house, that your house is you, you put the, the deed on a blockchain and then you tokenize it and other people can you can tokenize it and when you sell it you can have a percentage of your house every time it's sold go to your um wallet for perpetuity for like for each of these, so any of these pictures where you see this like okay well this sells for a million dollars but say that's not a, that's not a house anymore that's that's your car that's your that is the um Toyota you have outside that you block you put it on the blockchain and if you didn't go and sell it for let's okay that's a million dollars but let's just say you know easier price let's say five thousand dollars or, or two thousand dollars you sell this this car used for two thousand dollars and you get ten percent of the profits then later on down the line somebody sell it for five hundred dollars and you get fifty dollars off that and that's and that's for whenever that car sells on the blockchain you got it set up to where you get a percentage off of that. And so the, imagine the, all the things that's going to be for. Um, it could be even clothes or anything that can be tracked that, that people have. You can, you know, if you make music now, instead of going through a record company, you make all your music through NFTs. And when every time it's played and an artificial algorithm hears it, charges some, you know, charge, sends a charge to whoever's playing it. You know, uh, their AI reaches out through to say, hey, that's being played. That is this NFT's copy, you know, blockchain information. You owe this amount of money. It's, it's going to be the future is going to be hopefully a lot fairer for individuals. It, it, you know, right now it depends on who's getting into it. Are you just getting the people with the individuals with money who are jumping into the market or you're going to have individuals who who. Right now, like that's what my my thing. We trying to push out the people. Like, look, just start throwing a little bit at a time. So when this take off and go crazy, you're not then looking around like on the outside looking in. You know, you have a bit of a foothold into this into this space because it is going to probably overtake what we think we we seen um, in the, even in the world of the internet so far. Not I'm not talking about just metaverse, but a lot of these converging technologies. You know. Think about you'll be able to have a surgeon, a human surgeon and a robot surgeon working together with artificial intelligence. So a robot there physically doing a surgery, you know, with no tremor shakes and every human tremor shakes. Um, and artificial intelligence seeing things, but the human overseeing it also being brought in to make sure that anything is not being missed, just being observed. Um, and what happened, of course, is that you eventually have one human involved in multiple different of these experiences at one time and be more just an overseer. And after a while, be so much just trust in the machine and probably, you know, you have to force the humans to stay involved in the process and overlook the, and oversee things. Um, it's, it's just, you know, and all that would be just augmented reality computer being a CD, human being to walk around inside these things and everything being a lot of the information and the um, equipment being used will be blockchain enabled. So everything will be each stitch, each staple will probably be uh, coded for in a blockchain. So accounted for when necessary. <laughs> it's going to be a, 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 an, an amazing future. And I want everyone who watched these videos and who enjoyed this and has a good heart to to be there and be able to enjoy it all. With that, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.